Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we praise and worship you for your goodness, love and mercy. As creator of the world, you gave us life and breath. As preserver of all life, you provide for us day by day. As redeemer of all mankind, you show us your love in Christ. We praise you that the Lord is King and his spirit has been poured into our hearts. In Christ, we join the heavenly host to praise, to worship and to adore. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, praise be to your name, O Lord Most High. Amen. of our Lord according to Luke chapter 8 starting to read at verse 22 one day Jesus said to his disciples let's go over to the other side of the lake so they got into a boat and set out as they sailed he fell asleep a squall came down on the lake so that the boat was being swamped and they were in great danger the disciples went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided and all was calm. Where is your faith? he asked his disciples. In fear and amazement, they asked one another, Who is this? He commands even the winds and the waters, and they obey him. This is the Gospel of Christ. In my wrestling and in my doubts In my failures you won't walk out 
Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you. Oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore. Today, the 20th of February, as church, we are rapidly running towards Easter. In 10 days, churches all over the world will recognise Wednesday, the 2nd of March, as Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. That's the 40 days from Ash Wednesday to the Saturday before Easter. Lent is often described as a time of preparation and an opportunity to walk more closely with God in our prayer time, as well as to help us to recognise when he's been with us in everything. A time, really, of personal reflection. The death and resurrection of Jesus is the most important storyline you find in the Bible, so it's no surprise that the majority of Christians celebrate this season. We are reminded of his coming into the world at Christmas and at Easter we are reminded of the precise reason for that coming. We are given the opportunity once again to remember with gratitude his involvement in our lives. A couple of weeks ago Andrew reminded us it's also the opportunity to give ourselves that spiritual health check we really should consider doing throughout this season of Lent. Over the 40 days of Lent, people choose to do different things as a way of bringing themselves closer to God, maybe giving up something or taking on something different, like attending special church church services, 
committing to pray more or give more time to others. Each individual Christian will take this season in their own way. You find in our Bible stories of Moses and Elijah and even Jesus experiencing 40 days and nights fasting, preparing themselves, if you like, for the next challenge they had to face. Over the years, different customs have developed in order to help people think about how they can serve God. Ultimately, though, serving God isn't about keeping religious customs. It's about having a personal relationship with him. Deepening that relationship, setting aside time to reflect and focus on him. Our Bibles show us constantly just how involved Jesus was with the people of the day and how he wants to be involved with us as well. I particularly like the letter written by James, said to have been the brother of Jesus and one of the first church leaders in Jerusalem possibly one of the first letters written for our guidance with very practical suggestions. At chapter 4 and verse 8 he says, Come near to God and he will come near to you. This, I believe, is what we do week by week when we gather to listen and learn and pray, getting our spiritual health fed, which is so important to us as we muddle along in this life. Knowing Jesus is with us, can only be a good thing. Over the past couple of weeks, we've been reminded again of various parables from our Bibles which show us all Jesus did when he walked the earth. The Gospel reading you heard this morning is another one. Jesus calms the storm. Luke uses this, this event alongside other miraculous events he has recorded in a group of his Gospels. It's often referred to as a miracle of nature. We read of how Jesus calms a storm, yet in the same story creates a storm in the heads and heart of those disciples on that boat with him. It's a well-known story. He gets into, into the boat with his disciples. A storm breaks over the lake. Apparently, this wouldn't have been unusual, as Lake Galilee is notorious for storms which come literally out of the blue, with terrifying suddenness. This happens because the lake is situated some 700 feet below sea level and adjacent to mountainous regions. Cold air from the heights tend to sweep down through the gorges to the east and can whip up sea storms suddenly. That's just one of those fascinating facts I actually remembered from my geography lessons at school. Have you ever been in a storm at sea? I have. It's pretty scary, I can tell you. You may well remember the time I spoke about the day my dad took us on a family day out to Landudno in the days when you could catch a ferry from the pier head, which would take you to the pier at Landudno. I was probably about 10 at the time. I can remember the river being calm when we left the pier head. It was so warm and sunny. We had picnic lunch and buckets and spades with us for a grand day out at the seaside. When we got out into Liverpool Bay, all of a sudden men started to run around the ferry trying to tie things down and shouting at all the people to go inside. I remember feeling quite scared. I can remember crying and I can remember sitting on my dad's knee and him holding me tightly, whispering into my ear that everything would be all right. You know, the fact that he was reassuring me that it would that it would be OK made me feel calmer. I don't suppose for one minute the storm we actually experienced was anywhere near as bad as the storm which those disciples experienced on Lake Galilee. But the reading of the story always brings it back to my mind once again. The disciples were in a panic. They thought they were going to die. They woke Jesus up saying, teacher, don't you care that we're about to die? Now, Jesus is in the back of the boat, sleeping with his head on a pillow. Apparently, these boats have a place set aside for important guests at the stern. It's carpeted with cushions arranged on it. This was said to be the best, the best vantage point for a person to see the sights from. Therefore, someone important would be offered that seat. Those disciples wanted to place Jesus in that important place. And when they did, 
he got so comfortable he slept. At the panic re request from his disciples, Jesus stands up, commands the wind to be quiet and the waves to be still, still, and suddenly there is a great calm. Such power was all too much for these disciples to comprehend. They were terrified for their lives because of that storm. And when they called upon the Lord, their fear was overcome by a different fear. They said to each other, who is this man? Even the winds and the waves obey him. They'd been with him long enough to see the miracles he had performed with people. But this, this was the first time they had seen the power he had over nature. What happened on that lake was a miracle. A miracle unlike any of any of those disciples had witnessed in the time they were with him. No wonder they were still afraid. No wonder they still had questions. This was one powerful experience for them. This was power they'd never seen before, and it's a wonderful miracle story in which an actual storm must have been stilled. You know, in Jesus, we have someone who can do anything, and if we trust him, he'd be there for us in all our storms. This is something he promised he would do. Time and again, we are told through the Bible that the power of God will overcome everything if we trust him. Once those disciples woke Jesus and he calmed the storm, they would have felt the peace we can feel, the feeling that whatever we have to face, we will never face it alone. He was with them in that storm. They had trusted Jesus enough to leave their homes and family to follow him, yet they temporarily forgot their trust. Panic overcame them. Jesus is, says to them, where is your faith? In saying these words, he just wanted to remind them and us that we have nothing to fear with him in charge of our lives. He wanted so dearly for them to have faith in him, to trust him, to carry them forward, just as he does with us. It's as simple as that. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, you find these beautiful words. Surely I am with you always to the very end. End, end of the age. We're no different than those disciples. We can feel fear over many different things. And in our hearts, Jesus will say to us, why are you frightened? I am with you. He wants us to trust him no matter what life throws at us. In Weston, where we are, the events of that storm on Lake Galilee all those years ago may well seem remote. Maybe you're worn down with so much trouble in your lives. The fact that he was there for the disciples showing God's mercy and God's grace in their troubles then may have little significance for you today. But he said to those disciples once he had calmed the lake, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Jesus calming that storm on a ship and which gathered would probably have been the most experienced handlers of a ship, those disciples get scared and they wake Jesus up. We need to look at this miracle of nature as a reassurance that we have a powerful friend in Jesus. All he ever wants us to do is trust him. As for the Landudno trip, as far as my memory serves, when we got to the pier there, we all walked off that ferry safely, me holding my dad's hand as we ran along the pier to get into the warmth of one of the little cafes. It rained all the time we were there, so we didn't get to build sandcastles or eat our picnic on the beach. But the trauma of the storm forgotten, my trust in my dad to keep me safe was renewed. And that's just the kind of relationship Jesus wants for us. I came across these words, which sums, sums things up very nicely. When all things seem against us and we're blinded by despair, we're called to have faith in Jesus Christ. Often the storms of life lead us to, feeling, to feelings of hopelessness. We're scared. We believe we're lost. We don't know if we can survive this next storm. What's worse, it seems that God does not care. In Luke 8, verses 22 to 25, we continue to tackle this issue of spiritual depression through an examination of the disciples' own fear. As the storm at sea threatens their lives, 
Jesus rebukes first the storm and then the disciples. They lack faith. The lesson is simple. Christians should never live in a state of terror. Yet too often we do. Our problem is no different than these disciples as we question Jesus' commitment to us and our call in the same. We must not question God's goodness, but trust him. We must have full confidence in Jesus. Does Jesus, does Jesus care about us? Yes, he does. He will always receive us, bless us and give us peace. Trust the God who calms the storm. Amen. believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? Do you believe and trust in God the Son who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And we just have a few moments silence as we bring before God any particular concerns or situations that we might wish to pray for. We ask all of these things in the name and for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we join in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, and the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>